It's been like five plus years. I'm pretty sure you know who this is. Just in case someone here has been living under the biggest, fattest rock you've ever seen for the past five plus years, Cuphead is a video game that's made to look, sound, and feel like the 1930s. It looks like the 1930s because every single part of every single frame is hand-drawn. It sounds like the 1930s because the music is recorded straight from a jazz orchestra. And it feels like the 1930s because it's really hard to get through. Cuphead and Mugman are brothers who have cups for heads. Just in case you couldn't figure that out. After gambling their souls away, Cuphead and Mugman are tasked with finding other debtors and returning their souls to the devil. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I love this game. The animation is amazing. The art style is amazing. The sound design is amazing. Everything feels like you're in the 30s. It's hard to play, but it's fun to play and it's fun to watch. There's so much I love about Cuphead. Except for a few... bosses. That's what prompted me to make this video. That and the recently just released DLC that came out. Cuphead has a lot and a lot of very fun, unique, and interesting boss fights. And a few that I just don't like. So I figured, hey, why not rank the bosses in a specific order that I like based on a few key factors? I'm gonna be dividing what I like about each boss into two specific categories, which I like to call substance and style. Substance is gonna include gameplay, it's gonna include what I like about how difficult a boss is, or how much fun I have trying over and over again. Style is presentation, style is how great an animation is, or how amazing the music is. I'm gonna start out by saying this is exclusively my opinion. If you agree, that's cool. If you disagree, that's also cool. Tell me your list in the comments below. Before we begin, I'd like to specify that I would not call a single fight in Cuphead bad. I'm gonna be exaggerating a few of my opinions for comedic value, but for the most part, all of the bosses are fun, well-designed, and very creative. Apart from number 31. With that, let's get right into the ranking. Number 31, the worst fight in Cuphead is... The Pawns from the King's Court. Are people gonna get mad at me for this? Is this a controversial choice? Do people really want to defend the Pawns from the King's Court? I thought about not including any fights from the King's Court at all, but fights like this made me want to put it in the video because this is, this is barely a fight at all. It's just bonk them on the head, you're done, that's it. And they jump at you, that's it. I like the part where they boo you at the beginning, but other than that, it's just not a battle at all. Look at that, I barely, I barely even talked about them and they're done, they're dead. Okay, that's the most negative I'm gonna get in this video. Everything from here on out is uphill. Number 30, Wally Warbles in Aviary Action. I gotta start off by saying I really dislike Cuphead's airplane levels. I much prefer the platforming levels. They're more fun and I'm better at them, which makes me have a better time. And with that said, this is my least favorite airplane fight of them all. The fight lasts forever. I don't like the backgrounds that much. Like, I get it, you're in the sky, but when the background is just sky it's kind of boring when you beat wally and you have to focus on the little bird boy all he does is float around he just kind of goes wherever he wants and the main task is just avoiding him until he takes out his laser gun but you can parry every single bullet there's no threat whatsoever with that and then once you do defeat him i mean i like when he cries because i like when children cry but when he's defeated, Wally comes back with no feathers and spits stuff at you. That's boring. Spits stuff at you. That's just not fun. That's weird. Next, number 29, the angel and the devil. In this secret boss, the devil will always be in front of you and the angel will always be behind you. Every time you turn around, the devil's attacks will be replaced with little angel bubbles that don't harm you and vice versa. But you can use this really easily to your advantage. You can just turn around and make attacks go away. It takes away any sort of challenge. And the music is just, I mean, it's really mysterious and it's kind of cool, but it's not Cuphead, you know what I mean? It's not bombastic, it's not big and loud. But let's say you're having a really fun time with the boss fight. You're going, whoa, this was weird. Can I try again? But what score did I get? What? What? You just get booted! You don't get a score, you don't 
ever get to try again, the only way you get to try the fight again is to replay the entire game until you get up to that point. That's what makes the fight one of the worst in my opinion. Never, ever getting to try again. Number 28. Baroness Von Bonbon in Sugarland Shimmy. Let's get the big negative out of the way. I don't like how the fight is randomized. From phases 1 through 3, Baroness Von Bonbon will send out a different minion to take you out. The minion each time is a different minion. I would rather that not happen. I would rather the fight be against the same minion in the same order so I could learn a pattern more easily. And the final phase, which is not randomized, is kinda boring. Despite the castle literally coming alive, it's just not that fun to fight against. However, I want to specify that I really do like the animations and the art style, and especially the background. I love the candy and the sweets aura this thing has going on. I really like how crazy Baroness looks in the second half of the fight, but the actual fight itself is just kind of boring. More like Baroness Von Borbor. Let's just move on. Number 27, The Bishop of the King's Court. This fight is pretty short, which I'm having trouble figuring out if that's a positive or a negative thing, but the main problem I have with this fight is the sounds. Specifically when you finish snuffing the candles and he goes That just isn't that fun, I'd rather not hear that all the time when I'm playing. It sounds like if I'm fighting Baldi with a stuffy nose, it just doesn't sound appealing to hit him and go the fight is short, it's just snuff the candles and listen to him say Arr. I don't like that, that's just not what I want to listen to. Number 26, Hilda Berg in Threatening Zeppelin. Let's get a positive out of the way. I really like the way this fight looks. This is a perfect introduction to an airplane level. Hilda Berg zips and zops all over the screen, laughing at you as an attack which is really funny in my opinion, and especially when the sky gets dark as she transforms is really fun. But with that said, it's still an airplane level, so it's gonna go pretty low. And on top of that, some of the movements are just too wacky for me. Like, this bull keeps moving up and down on the screen, and it makes it hard for me to consistently get hits on the bull. And it's especially hard when I know that the bull is gonna lunge and potentially hit me. Don't get me wrong, I think Cuphead should be wacky. It's a 1930s-esque cartoon video game, wacky should be in there. But this is too wacky for me. This is wacky as heck, and that's what's gonna make it lower on the list. Number 25, Mortimer Freeze in Snow Cult Shuffle. Two words, boring. It's not super difficult, but it's not super easy. It's not super weird. It's just snow themed things like a big snowman or little ice minions. I like the third phase, but only for the Northern Lights. Other than that, this fight is just boring. Number 24, Rumor Honeybottoms in Honeycomb Herald. I like the first phase a ton, trying to fight the guard or cop or something while trying to jump around the honeycomb and avoid other people is really fun, but then Rumor shows up and it's just not that fun, and especially not the second phase where she drops her head down the middle with the chain. It's hard because you can only hit the top or the bottom, and I don't like that. I like when the enemies are big and easy to hit. The fight is difficult, sure, but that's mainly due to awkward platforming and weird hitboxes. Number 23, Jimmy the Great in Pyramid Peril. I like Jimmy a ton, and I like the first phase where he chucks a bunch of stuff out of his treasure chest at you, but then he just kind of summons stuff for you to fight instead of him, which isn't that fun. I like Puppet Cuphead, I think that's really funny. I think it's really fun and it's pretty funny, but other than that, and especially the second phase where you're trying to shoot through the hieroglyphics, it's just not that fun. Number 22, The Rook of the King's Court. I love the animation at the beginning where he stops daydreaming and notices you and gets ready for a serious battle, but then after that he just kinda sits there getting his axe ready and flinging the heads of past victims back at him is a fun concept, but I just don't have that much fun with the actual fight itself. It might have something to do with the dungeon setting, I think it's too grimy and dark, but it's just an okay fight regardless. Number 21. Dr. Carl's robot in Junkyard Jive. My main problem with this fight is his second phase. The first phase is fine enough where you try and shoot different parts of the robot's body down, and the third phase where he uses a Chaos Emerald to make chaos is pretty fun, but that second phase is lame! 
This is not that fun! It's not that hard either, it's just really not fun trying to hit him as he keeps moving. This fight would have actually been a lot higher if the second phase was just better, but it's not, so it's right here. Number 20, Ribby and Croaks in Clip Joint Calamity. I like the first phase where Ribby shoots out a bunch of Hadokens, and trying to fight against the fan Croaks makes this fun, but I don't like the slot machine segment. You can only hurt the machine once you hit the lever, but all the things it shoots at you during that time is mediocre and barely changes throughout. But the setting and the music with that saxophone is really fun, and it makes the fight worth playing. Number 19, Cala Maria in High Seas Hijinks. I really wanted to rank this fight higher. I mean, come on, it's Cala Maria, the sexy fish lady, but I just couldn't. The first phase where she shoots fish or other sea-related items at you is pretty fun, but once she turns into Medusa, and especially on the third phase where it becomes just her head in the Cavern of Crystals, I lose all interest. I don't like her theme song, and I don't like the Medusa level, but the first phase of the fight combined with, uh, what I'm looking at is pretty fun, and that's what puts it up here. Number 18, Glumstone the Giant in Gnome Way Out. Each phase in this fight gets progressively worse. I love the first phase a ton. Watching him do things like dangle a bear close to you only to get bored and chuck it away is really funny. And the little gnomes make for some good action since you gotta keep moving around. Then the second phase, while the callback to King Dice and the Devil is very fun, Actually playing through the phase is just okay. It's not super hard, but at least it isn't boring. Like the third phase when the giant eats you, fighting... What is this thing anyway? Is it an enzyme? Is it his soul? Is it his stomach? Regardless, it's just not that fun to actually fight against while trying to platform on these little skeleton guys. But that really, really fun first phase carries this fight. Number 17, Goopy Legrand in Ruse of the News. Or maybe it's Grand. Right about the middle of the list goes the easiest boss in the whole game. Seriously, it's so easy. You can duck under most of his attacks. On top of that, I think the gravestone is really limited. It just occasionally actually comes into the foreground to hit you. But I love the song. It's so bombastic. And I love the way he just kind of bops around the screen for most of the fight until you quote unquote kill him. Easy doesn't necessarily mean bad. Here, it's easy, but it's not bad. Number 16, The Root Pack in Botanic Panic. What an amazing first fight for a game. The music is so stellar and it's so 30s, it really sucks you into the world that you're in. And it lets you see just a glimpse of what the rest of the game is gonna be like and how it really goes above and beyond. But with that said, it is still the first fight. It's easy and you know, vegetables aren't exactly memorable boss fights, but this is still a pretty dang good level. Number 15, the Howling Aces in Doggone Dogfight. Right away, I love the fact that this is not an airplane segment, this is an airplane fight. Essentially, you ride on the platform of this biplane piloted by a friend, and you jump and duck through the attacks by the dog gang. I love all the dog-themed attacks, like shooting hydrant missiles right at you, or... The cat from Warner Worman? Sorry, anyway, I think after the first phase, the fight goes a little downhill. Like, for an amazing first phase with the dog shooting bones at you, the second phase is just they kind of float around you, which is unremarkable and easy to dodge, especially the bow wows that they shoot at you. But then the big dog rotates the screen, which is really cool, until I realize that I am not good at it, and it's my list, so I'm putting it lower down because of that. With that said, it's still pretty dang good just brought down by an unremarkable second phase. Number 14, Beppy the Clown in Carnival Kerfuffle. This is gonna sound a little weird, but I am not scared of clowns. I think they're funny, which is why I'm super happy that Beppy isn't like a scary clown. Like that'd just be stupid. Who the heck would want a scary clown? That'd be stupid. But instead of that, they use the opportunity of him being a clown to do theme park attacks like hot air balloons or roller coasters or merry-go-rounds. The music in the fight is super bouncy, but Beppy is held back by a few things. One, he's annoying. 
the voice actor did a very good job, but he won't shut up. Plus, the fight for me is a little unremarkable. Sure, the background of being on a roller coaster is amazing, but when I try and think of the actual fight, I can't really remember anything except that final phase where he becomes the whole tumbler. That's a tumbler, right? Number 13, the queen of the king's court. It's kind of weird that there's a queen boss fight, but not a king. Like, come on, king, it's your court, at least rule it. But with that said, the queen is okay. Like, dodging the Fabergé eggs is kind of fun. And the mice cheering at the end, that's a nice little touch. I like that a lot, but it's still just okay. I, don't, I can't even really comment it on that that much. It's just kind of okay. Number 12. Esther Winchester in High Noon Hoopla. You know by now that I really don't like airplane fights, right? This is by far my favorite airplane fight. I love the style of this fight and I love how western it is, how wild west it is. I love that she's such a good thief that she stole the entire saloon and that's the first phase. And I love the second phase, pulling a Luigi's Mansion and using a vacuum to suck in nearby money. And I love the way the little wanted poster flies away when she switches levels on the saloon. But I'm not a big fan of the third and fourth phases. The third phase, while turning into a bunch of sausages, is funny. Actually playing through the level then is just kind of okay. And keep in mind, this is still an airplane fight, so I'm still biased against it. And the fourth phase, while fighting against a can, is kind of funny. The sausage links are very confusing to follow. Number 11, Sally stage play in Dramatic Fanatic. I might be a little biased since I was a theater kid, but I love the way the fight plays and looks like a play. I love the fact that the fight has three phases plus an ending phase, which is like how plays work. They have three acts and then a little curtain call. I love the curtain call bringing everyone back. I love the dad slash husband in the back. He's super funny and he has such good expressions. I like the dumb expression this baby has when you beat Sally. But at the same time, like, you see the formula it has going, right? The first phase, the first act is them getting married. The second phase, the second act is them trying to live a nice house life. I wish that the third phase did something more with that theme. I wish it went with a more family dynamic than Angel or whatever, and then you could save the little Angel for when she's on the top doing the little cheer during the curtain call. I feel like it'd still work. I just really wish that this fight had more of a family dynamic, you know what I mean? And with that said, I'm not a big fan of the babies. Like, at least they don't cry. That I will give props. At least they don't cry. But dude, just trying to play the game and constantly hearing is so annoying, dude. Number 10, Cagney Carnation in Floral Fury. I think Cagney Carnation is just a little overrated. And I usually hate using that word because more often than not, it just boils down to, I don't understand why people like it. Therefore, it's not that good, but it applies here. I don't understand why people like Cagney Carnation as much as they do. Don't get me wrong, it's a good fight, but it's pretty easy. And on top of that, the third phase is just kind of boring at best. But with that said, those first two phases are really fun. The animations are amazing. The song that is in Smash Bros is really good. And the little oh my sound effect that plays whenever he opens his when he opens his leave hand things and reveals the little spinny boomerang. That's really fun. I like this fight a lot. Number 9. Grim Matchstick in Fiery Frolic. My main problem with this fight is the floating cloud platforms feel too random to me. I already established before that I don't like it when things are random, and Grim Matchstick definitely applies to that. But with that said, I love dragons. I can't help it. I love dragons. I love the tower in the background. There's probably a princess in there. Who knows? I don't know. I watched Shrek a lot as a kid. I love the dragon, I love the breathing of the fire, and I love the little tail wiggle right before it shoots up and hits you. I love the flames, and I love the especially, I love the three heads that come out right at the end and form a hydra as the sky turns dark and lightning flashes. It's so cool! But the floating clouds and a few other problems like the fire is a little bit annoying is just what's holding this fight back. Number 8. King Dice in. All bets are off. I'm going to treat King Dice's boss rush all as one boss, alright? I'm not going to individually rank the monkey and the alcohol and the cigar, it's just too much. 
With that said, I'd put the betting horse at the bottom and the Russian roulette at the top. Let's get the big, big positive out of the way. I love the casino setting. I love how every single boss fight is some different form of casino theme, whether it be the alcohol that a casino could give you or something that you would bet on in a casino, like the Russian roulette. But with that said, I think King Dice is what holds the fight back. I know, I know, I love King Dice. I love the song Die House, I love his voice, and I love how big and threatening he is in this game. Once you get through the boss fight and you're ready to take on the big man himself, he kinda just throws cards at you, and it's just one attack. That's my main problem with this fight, it's King Dice. It's King Dice himself. As much as I love King Dice and I wanna put him higher, he is what holds the boss rush back. Number seven. The devil in one hell of a time. I love the first phase so much of this fight. I love how overboard they went with making him slimy and villainous. It's so good. I especially love the attack where he turns into a snake and slithers halfway across the screen only to shoot back. Or the spider attack where he drops down from above. It's so good. It's so slimy. It's everything you'd associate with a pure villain. And then we get into the second phase, and he's gigantic! Just his face takes up your entire battlefield, it's so good! And he does even more crazy attacks, like spawn a bomb out of his left ear, it's so good! And then the third phase, while not as fun to play, it lets you really feel how thematic it is, because you can see he's getting angry, you can see he's really getting mad, and then you get to the fourth phase and he starts crying and that's really really annoying you could argue that the first three phases of this fight should place it higher but me personally I think because the fourth phase is so unfun it drags down the rest of the fight with it number six the Phantom Express in Railroad Wrath I love spooky settings and I love that this fight is everything spooky it's like a mini boss rush of different spooks like this ghost that shoots different eyeballs out of its hand that's so cool or the giant skeleton conductor that tries to squish you is so cool but with that said actually playing through the fight it's not painfully boring but it is pretty boring like I love the first phase I love the second phase the third phase is kind of okay, and the fourth phase, while when you get the hang of it it's fun, trying it for the first time kind of brings it down a little bit. Number 5, Captain Briny Beard in Shootin' and Lootin'. Dude, I love pirates, and having a whole boss fight against the pirate captain and his ship is so cool. I love the thing that he pulls out, I think it's like a fish or something that he shoots little pellets at you, that's so cool. And I love the different kinds of minions he spawns in. Yes, they're randomized, but they're all easy to follow and they're easy enough to understand. And then when the ship gets so mad at you that it just ditches Captain Brinybeard and tosses him overboard, and you can see his little pirate body falling, that's so fun. And then he hyper beams you? I can't, I can't with this fight, it's so good. But with that said, the fourth phase is what brings it down. Despite how much I just talked about the hyper beam and how cool it is, actually trying to play through the pirate ship itself is kind of boring. Not to mention, Briny Beard starts off the fight really slowly. But when the fight really kicks off, I love it so much. It's enough to put it in the top five of my favorite boss fights. Number four. The Knight of the King's Court. This fight isn't as high up for the reason you think. Yes, the music's amazing, yes, I like the backgrounds, and yes, the knight itself is very well animated. But it's not difficult, but that's why I like it. It's genuinely a lot of fun seeing how many parries you can put together in one string. It's genuinely a lot of fun. I can't comprehend it. Like, the knight beat Captain Briny Beer? Yeah. I had a lot of fun just trying to bounce off the little mane as he's tired and seeing how many you can get away with before you get hurt is like really fun. But with that said, it still is one of the King's Court fights so that's gonna hold it back, namely due to a lack of variety. Here we go, we're in the top three baby, this is the podium of the best fights in Cuphead according to me. These fights are so good that I'm not gonna pick some random background song that feels like they fit within the fight, I'm going to let the actual song play. Number 3, Werner Wormen in Marine Corps. This is my favorite fight in base game Cuphead. I love Werner Wormen. Or is it Werner Vermin because he's German? 
whatever. Anyway, this fight is so good. This is my favorite fight. I already said that, but like, this beats the devil. This beats King Dice's boss rush. This beats Captain Briny Beard. This fight is so good. The music, Marine Corps is my favorite song in the game, including the DLC. I love the saxophones at the beginning, I love the trumpets and the way they elevate it a ton. I love how the first phase, while it is pretty easy, it's not so easy that it's mind-numbing. Like, you still gotta pay attention. And the second phase is just iconic. I mean, the bottle cap saws as they try to close in on you as you try and focus on Werner as he's moving up and down. It's legendary! That's what I think of when I think of Werner. But I know what a lot of other people think of when they think of Werner Werman. They think of the cat that comes in from the third phase and that becomes the boss fight. And that's so cool! I love how the inside of the cat's mouth is visible as Werner just kind of sits there like knowing it's his doom. And I love the little cat's jaunt as he's like ready to take you down. It's so funny! And I love the little meows that he makes and I love the way the souls of other dead rats come to attack you. It's so cool! I love Werner Worman! It's so good! How does no one else love it this much? I just can't comprehend it! I, other people will say that the devil's the best, or King Dice's boss rush is the best. I think the Tom and Jerry's the best! But keep in mind, that is base game Cuphead. The DLC still has two more bosses that I really like. Number two. There is one thing holding this fight back from being number one. After playing and thinking about these fights for a long time, I think number two should be... The Moonshine Mob in Bootlegger Boogie. I like the Anteater, I think he's well animated and I think he's funny, but the fight slows down a little bit. Not sucks, not goes down the drain, just slows a little bit. With the only negative I have with this fight out of the way, I can't get over how good this fight is! I just can't believe it! This fight is amazing! The music is Top tier Cuphead, this is so good! The scatting from the woman is so good, and I love the policemen and the bootleggers having an ongoing fight around you. I love the gramophone that comes down and that's what your main target is during the second phase. And I love the fake knockout screen, it's so good! I love the fake knockout, and I love the way the boss fight establishes that he's there in the beginning, so you don't feel super dumb when he comes down and kills you. I love the way the head honcho, the main mafia guy, he speaks in Italian, quote unquote, and I mean, you know, fake Peter Griffin Italian. This fight is so good, I just can't get over it. It's amazing, this fight is so good. This is everything Cuphead! It's hard, it's 30s, it's bombastic, it's loud, it's amazing. It's so good, I love it so much. But there's still one more we haven't gone over. And finally, number one, the best fight in Cuphead is... Chef Salt Baker in A Dish to Die For. When Cuphead's DLC was both released and announced, I did not trust Chef Saltbaker. I had a bad feeling about him, despite how big and jolly he looked. I just had a bad feeling, especially when the marketing only said, he's here, and then that's it. That set off a few red flags in my head. And additionally, when the actual game came out and he was all like, I can make the Wonder Tart, which can bring people back to life. And all you need to do is kill the most fearsome foes in the land to get it for me. That set off so many red flags, it was unreal. I understood that there would be a boss fight coming up. I understood that Chef Saltbaker was not all he seemed. Now with that said, I never in my wildest dreams thought the fight would be this good! I'm gonna go down that original list I made at the beginning and go over why he succeeds in each and every single one of those categories. First, the difficulty. It's so hard, this is a really hard fight, and it's for all the right reasons. It's not because of weird platforming or janky hitboxes, it's because there's a lot of stuff on screen that can kill you. This fight is so good. It's hard, and it's varied, and it's fun all the way through, and the music, oh my god, it's amazing. I can't believe that violin is played live, and the animations. I can't focus on the gameplay because the animations of Chef Saltbaker are so good! His manic expression as he tears apart some lemons, 
or the way he summons a giant rolling pin so he can destroy this magic lump of dough. Plus, you want to stay motivated because you can see who you're trying to save in the background. It's not just about you anymore. You're trying to save someone else, whether you're trying to save Cuphead or Mugman or Miss Chalice. And can we talk about that second phase? He grows giant and the battlefield, instead of being the table, becomes his hand? And he summons different kinds of salt shakers to sneeze at you or something? It's so good and he's laughing at you the entire time and chucking oregano or something at you? I can't believe how good they made this fight! I expected like, Disney twist villain levels of twist villain, but he's great! He's fun! I think Chef Saltbaker 100% earns the number one spot in my Cuphead ranking video. And here we are at the end of the list. I just want to specify one last time, these were all my opinions. I'm really sorry if you really liked Wally Warbles and I put him at the near bottom of the list. Thank you guys for watching until the end of the video. I understand that the last of my content was gaming stuff like Let's Plays, but I want to take my channel in a new, different direction. So if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe and maybe ring the bell if you're really feeling up to it. If not though, I respect you. With that said, thank you again for watching the video.